If you don't use a velocity vector after you watch this video, I can pretty much guarantee you it's probably going to be your favorite thing also on the G3X. My absolute favorite feature of the G3X is something called a flight path marker or a flight path indicator or the velocity vector. Now, what is this amazing thing? It's a small, green, triangular object with a circle in the middle that moves through space. <laughs> Which sounds a lot like I'm describing a UFO, but what it looks like is this. So this is straight from the G3X Touch Manual. It's described in my version of the G3X Touch Manual on page 264. And what this thing does is it shows your actual aircraft's movement through space. So if you have a crosswind, it will indicate left or right on your display, and it will actually show where your aircraft is heading. Additionally, it'll move vertically, and that's probably the coolest feature and the most obvious one. So I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff this does. First of all, when does it show up? Well, on takeoff at about 30 knots, pops into view right there. Here I'm on a takeoff roll and you can see the velocity vector appears in the middle of the screen. But what does it do after that and why is it so amazing? It'll show you exactly where your aircraft is moving and it will show that overlaid on top of things like terrain. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is in aircraft footage of the screen of the terrain around me and you'll see how the velocity vector interacts as you fly. When you're doing things like climbs and descents, which I'll start off with while holding the nose steady, you can see the velocity vector is going to indicate where your aircraft is moving, not where your nose attitude is. Super cool. Yes, you can extrapolate some of this using your VSI, but this is, I think, just way better and way cooler. So I'll do other things like hard turns. I'll show some slow flight, which makes the velocity vector look pretty dramatic. You can really see what it's doing in slow flight. And then I'll actually go down into a low level environment and you can see how the G3X interacts with terrain and specifically the velocity vector. So with terrain alerts on and off, I'll show you the difference and when you have the velocity vector on terrain, off terrain, and what's happening in that low level environment. Super, super cool. If you don't use a velocity vector after you watch this video, I can pretty much guarantee you it's probably gonna be your favorite thing also on the G3X or at least one of them. And you can use the velocity vector every single time you fly a G3X equipped aircraft forever after you know how to use it. And it's a phenomenal piece of technology. So let's go. So now let's see what the flight path indicator does when I'm at the same nose attitude, but I'm changing power settings. So here I'm gonna hold just about five degrees nose up. You can see I'm holding pretty much level, 6,500 feet. So even though I'm five degrees nose up, not surprisingly, and a little bit slower flight condition for this aircraft, I'm actually level. So if I were to keep that five degrees nose up, but feed in a little bit more throttle, you'll see the five the nose attitude is gonna stay in the same place, but that flight path indicator is gonna to start to tick up and I'm gonna to start to climb. So again, that's just a really cool visual indication of what's going on with the plane. You can see on the right side of the G3X, the VSI is going up, I'm starting to climb. And same nose attitude, but different flight path. Now let's do the opposite, I'll pull the power way back. Keeping that five degrees nose up. So there's back to essentially level and now I'm starting to descend still with the five degree nose up attitude. And you can see the AOA coming alive. And now I'm in a little descent while still five degrees nose up. So I think that's a really clear indication of what the flight path indicator is doing. Instead of referencing a course where the nose is on the aircraft, it's actually referencing your flight path through the air. Super cool, just a great feature to have. And I should note that on uh, like a fighter or an aircraft with a HUD, 
they'll normally have a velocity vector that water lines to the horizon just like this. And uh, same thing except you're looking through the HUD and it's actually showing you looking outside what you're seeing instead of on the display. But this is essentially giving you the same amount of information just in a separate place on the aircraft. So it's really cool. You can see here as I'm getting into a slow flight condition, I just wanted to pause real quick. The velocity vector is far to the left side and that's because I've got that crosswind 10 knots from the right. And so you can see the velocity vector is no longer centered, it's pushed off to the left by the wind. Pretty cool. So as I'm entering slow flight here, you can see I've got my AOAs alive, my vertical speed I'm trying to hold at zero, trying to stay level, and my nose angle is real high, but the velocity vector is parked on the horizon. This is just a great indication of what that velocity vector is saying. It's saying, hey, you're still flying level, even though the nose angle is 12 and a half, 13 degrees nose high. So I'll keep slowing up here. I'm at 4,500, so I need to bring that back to the west. Now you can hear the AOA starting to talk to me a little bit here. I have to add some power in to keep level. How cool is that? You can see the flight path indicator is just bisecting that horizon line as we're turning around. Pull off a little more power, get even slower. Now it's uh, actually getting hit underneath the HSI, the heading. Just a little descent, there we go, there's the stall. Here I am doing about a 2G turn. And I'm just keeping that velocity vector right on the horizon. So not really climbing, not really descending. I can pull that up, same thing happens, more G's, just keep that velocity vector tracking across the horizon and I'm gonna hold this level. Now if I were to, let's say, put in a little right rudder, bring the nose up, you can see we're gonna see the velocity vector go up and then that's associated with a little bit of a vertical speed increase. Here's the opposite. A Little bit of a vertical speed decrease. And then this is true no matter how much turn we're putting in. Level it out. Right back on the horizon. And we are right back to not climbing or descending. In other words, right back to level. Now here's a really cool thing. This is probably my favorite part in terms of day-to-day -day use for the velocity vector. You can see right now I've got Mount Rainier off the nose and clearly, if I continue on this flight path, I am gonna smack right into Mount Rainier. All right now I'm at just a touch over 4,500 feet and that mountain's on the horizon. But if I put in a climb and I see the velocity vector is above the mountain, I know if I were to continue at this climb rate, this airspeed, this VSI, essentially those are the components that make up the flight path, I would be able to climb over the terrain ahead of me. Now there are a bunch of caveats. As the aircraft climbs, my climb performance is going to decrease. I'm starting to bleed airspeed here. But this is just indicative of the idea that if I were to stay on the flight path I'm on right now, I would clear the terrain in front of me. It's a pretty awesome feature. And I'll show this again with other terrain that I'm actually flying closer to. You can see the flight path indicator is gonna indicate whether or not it looks like the terrain is gonna be a factor for us. But this is super, super cool. And this, you know, Rainier's pretty far off in the distance right now. And uh, even at that distance, it can give you a really quick indication on whether or not that terrain is gonna be a factor.
So if I was, say, climbing at a two and a half degree flight path angle, which you could do the math on if you were going to take ground speed and your VSI, you could get to that. But there's two problems with that. Number one, that's some, you know, that's a lot of math to do in the cockpit while you're flying. Number two is you're not necessarily going to have a chart where it's easy to really quickly rubber band or show where something like a mountain or the terrain is compared to where you are. And you may not actually know what the terrain is you're looking at. So really cool feature to have. Let's go look at how this uh, interacts with terrain around you in a little bit of a lower flight environment. It's super cool what it does. So let me show you how you can access some of these different things. So first of all, you can pull up the terrain page. Once you're on the terrain page, you can go in and change your alert sensitivity. I've got it on high right now. You can go all the way to off and none of the terrain would turn red, which I'll show you in a minute. But that's where you can get to these terrain, uh, these terrain options. It is in the terrain page. So here we go, this is a great example. It's showing me that that train just to my left, just to the left of my nose, now I'm putting my velocity vector on it, is a factor for me. And so what I want to do is move that velocity vector off of it, and obviously I'll be doing this visually as well. I wouldn't be flying in this low environment just on the G3X. But it gives you a nice indicator of what is or is not a factor for you. So you can see here, now I've got the velocity vector up above any terrain on the horizon, and I am going to clear that terrain. Again, uh, there's no people, vehicle, or structures around here, so I'm clear for altitude. Pull up. I've got the G3X audibles yelling at me as well. But you can see I'm actually going to clear them, both visually, of course, and then looking at the G3X. And so now I'm down in sort of this ravine in this valley. If I were to make this left turn. Terrain ahead. Pull up. And for the record, there is an area I could put the plane down underneath me here. Pull up, pull up. So it is, it is screaming at me. It is saying, hey dummy, if you keep on this flight path, you're going to crash into that terrain. You should pull up. Giving me the red, the yellow, the color coding. And then you can actually see through both the forward looking camera and on the G3X that there is a bit of a saddle that I could fly through here, which is what I'm going to fly between. And so as I go through the saddle, the G3X is still yelling at me that the train's a factor, because it is, it's on either side of me, and I have my train sensitivity turned up high, but I could go in and turn that down, which I'll do in a minute and show you the difference. So here it is saying train's a factor all around you, everything's red, but the velocity vector is indicating that I'm going to clear that train, although it is too close for the liking of the settings I have on the G3X right now. Now I'm out and clear. And that's just a super cool feature. I'm not saying go fly low level through terrain just on your G3X, but you, that gives you an idea of what the power of this system is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same thing again the opposite way, but I'll show you what it looks like with the alert sensitivity turned all the way down. So I'm going to go back to my terrain page. I'm going to hit menu. I'm going to go alert sensitivity. I'm going to turn it from high to off. Now the alerts are going to be inhibited. And so now I'll turn around and fly through there the opposite direction. And you'll see it won't give me any of that color coding and it won't yell at me, uh, give me the pull up and train warnings audibly. So here's a good visual. You can see I'm nose low. I would be headed straight into that terrain. The velocity vector is pointed straight into that terrain. But again, I have the terrain sensitivity turned all the way off for alerts, and so it's not going to give me any of the red warnings on the screen, and it's not going to give me the audibles. A little hard to see sometimes on the display when you have terrain off in the distance and terrain close. So you can see there, I'll pull this up a little bit so you can see, there's the saddle in front of me. The G3X does a nice job with shading, but it can be hard to see where the train is. But looking out the front of the aircraft, I can obviously see where the saddle is compared to the train in the distance. So I've got my velocity vector going right through the saddle, and kind of make out where the bottom of the saddle is. Again, it's a little bit tricky with that background train as well. 
but you're seeing that I'm not getting those audible warnings and I'm not getting the train turned red. But the whole point of this is just how cool it is that the velocity vector gives you those indications of where the terrain's a factor and where it's not. And hopefully on the video it's clear enough that you can see the terrain off in the distance and kind of match that with what you're seeing on the G3X screen. Now if I wanted to get that velocity vector popped up high in a climb, see that I'm going to clear all that terrain, obviously now in the climb, on this flight path, none of that terrain's going to be a factor for me. How cool is that? All right, that's it. I hope you now love the velocity vector as much as I do. It's just such a cool piece of technology that we have in these planes. If you have a G3X or you fly with a G3X, the fact that you can have a velocity vector overlaid on the train around you inside the cockpit is just incredible. And there's so many uses for it. So if you like this video, uh, go ahead and tap like. Even better, tap subscribe so you can see when more things come out and leave me a comment or anything just so I know whether or not people actually are enjoying this type of stuff. Honestly, I'll probably keep putting it out anyway just because I like making it. I think it's fun and I think it's cool to put things like this out, especially if there's things like the velocity vector that I have learned a lot of people don't really use to the full potential. So that's it and hopefully we'll see you on some other ones.